I thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to finish up there, because I was thinking, he's been stung by the dangerous thing right that we don't even eat, we don't even touch. We just don't go near it, and he got hit by it. In the morning, it is the plastic run. Ghost nets and plastics are collected on each beach and destroyed. It is the best the sea rangers can do. The problem is so vast. Well, there you go. I just walked along a couple of metres, and here it is, all the rubbish. You'd be surprised what collects on the beaches here, especially, like, you know, we're in a, an extremely remote location, but it's still full of this rubbish, and the rubbish drifts in the current. That's the best they can do to keep these pristine beaches clear of all this rubbish. The boys are back in town. <laughs> Transporting the waste back is not an option in these remote areas. You know the worst part about these nets? Is they just burn into a big pile of oozy pus. At least they can't drift back out and create more havoc. Ghost nets entangle the fridging reefs, killing sea life. Boom! <laughs> we do the fire dance stance, a bit of a local custom. You see that number there, countdown? <laughs> this plastic run is repeated at each beach campsite. Marcus gives me a spearing lesson with the throwing stick, a bit of jump. Use this one for power or distance? Power or distance? Both. Both. Think of the fish? More penetration. Yeah, you want to get a, get a moving target real quick, you use that one. If you're here, yeah. flick it straight like that. Body of the stick right here? Yep. So the eyes here and here? Yep. The best spot between the eye? Between the eyes, yep. yep. And outside of the area of the liver. As well as the best place to spear the rays. He also runs through what stingrays to hunt and which to stay away from. The ones that we will be hunting is the, what we call nammal, the brown uh, black whip stingray. Yep. Big one. It can grow pretty large, but we'll get the medium size. And the cow tail one, we call gurikpi. They're the ones in season at the moment. There's other ones you'll see um, that's got a uh, blue spot that's no good. We call that one Gideon. And when you get him, pin him down and make sure you watch where the tail is. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, Bob. you want to get back home to feed your mob, you know? Otherwise, you'll be lying there and they're dead. Yeah, limping home. Yeah, you'll be, yucca, you'll be crying. Yucca. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be saying yucca. Yucca! <laughs> dangerous one. Really but there's a medicine for the most dangerous has a local antidote, a beach cockroach. We use boiling hot water. Uh, this little beetle, uh, not beetle, a uh, little black cockroach. Yeah. You squash it, put it in your... Black cockroach? No kidding? Yeah. Now that little chat is chilling, considering what happens in the next few days. We move to Camp 2 at Jensen Bay. Last time I came here, we landed on a plane. Yeah. Long time ago. When I was only a small boy. Really? 20 years ago? Yeah, about 20 years ago. Jensen Bay was the site of a hidden Coast Watch station. A sole man was stationed here for years, radioing in any sightings of aircraft or shipping. We have an area to search that was the location of the radio hut. That looks like it there, mate. Look at that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it for sure. There's another one here, look. That's it. Yeah, well, apparently, apparently, so he lived in this humpy, right? Yep. And it was, this was right where the, the tower sat. And when, you know, we're not talking some big tower. We're no, talking really like small. this little frame, yeah. And that looks like one of the one of the uh, blocks that it was attached to. There's another one here. here too. Yeah, just hold it over there and I'll, wait, I'll put the dirt. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you got a bullet. There it is. Look at that. What do you got? That's got to be it. 
get a bullet. It's a shell. Now, this bit of copper wire here is one of the clues in this whole story, and it's like a piece of the puzzle. And it starts here at Jensen Bay. Now, the bay was named after a guy by the name of Mad Jack Jensen. Now, he was a coast watcher. Now, back in, back in around 1935, what they did was they set up all these stations around the top end of Australia to keep an eye on the coastline. They were coast watchers and they were, they were individual people that manned these remote outstations. Now, this one here, which um, we found, is where old Mad Jack spent a lot of time. And his job was to report any, any suspicious anomalies or, um, you know, anything. Anything that looked out of, out of sorts that they would report back to a base in Darwin. Now, here's the thing. In 1943, once war had broken out, they decided that they were going to come here and put a radar station. Now, a guy by the name of Wyndham, he, uh, he, uh, he rocked up here and um, basically, with the help of mad Jack Jensen, they uh, decided to scope the area out and put a radar station here on the Wessel Islands. Now, the radar station was designed to detect any enemy aircraft coming in from across from New Guinea because the Japanese were advancing on Australia. Now, the thing is, the radar station has never been found. To this day, it has never been found. And there's this dodgy old map that was put together by Wyndham. And basically, we're going to try and find it. How you going over there, boys? Mate, we're finding an absolute um, plethora of different bits and pieces. Wow, I'm going to have a look. <laughs> there you go, look at that. Oh, that's the something bullet. There. Yeah, that's an old bullet. That is not. That's an old bullet. That's not the bullet from these shells. No, that's a big, fat old slug, that one. Tomorrow, when we get up tomorrow, because we're running out of daylight now, we'll um, resume the search, mate. I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool. It's good, we're finding stuff. It's Very cold. exciting. G'day, guys. Today's video is brought to you by Camp Boss 4x4 tyre deflators, the Boss Airs. Now, these are a cool little product. They're Australia's number one selling tyre deflator. So if you've got a bit of a dodgy knee or a bad back, you can deflate four tyres at once just by screwing on each individual tyre. And I can guarantee you, by the time you come back around, there's a good chance you'll be able to take them straight off. Easy, simple way to deflate your tyres on a four-wheel drive. All right, guys, you can catch them at your local Campos dealer, or you can get them online at Campos 4x4 shop. Back to the adventure. We wake to a stunning morning and are invited to meet Jane, the senior TO at a sacred rock art site. It is a strange feeling entering the cave, a bit like going to church, if you know what I mean. Wow. For the documentary, that's the reason why we're allowing the film to take video of our father's painting. And some painting is from um, my, our grandpa. The story of what he saw and what was happening in those days. Met by uh, the uh, Air Force. McCassins, Flinders, I think, um, forefathers met Flinders at Australian, Australia Bay. And this is our home. <coughs> We've been living here yeah. for a long time. How, how long did you live here? When did you, Were you born here, Jane? Uh, my birthplace on the other side of the island. It's Lake. not from where we are. <laughs> not far from <laughs> other yeah. side. Yeah. That's my birthplace. Yeah. Jensen. Jensen, yes. Yeah. Jensen. Yeah, Jack, and Jack he Jensen. would have um, uh, two flags to warn the people the Japanese plane is coming. Oh, so he had to wave and, and everybody did... just hide in the caves. Did you yeah, did you have yeah. like a like a um 
like an air raid plan. Air yeah, raid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. like helping Jensen yeah. at that time. Yeah. So your your father and Jensen they worked together. He learned even though he didn't go to school. Yeah. But his English was how like he's been to somewhere. Good English. Ah. And I was proud listening to his story. I have I see these ones up here. That, this one up here, there's two boats. Uh, that that one there, definitely um, Macassan. Macassan, yeah. You the, can the, see it. The sails aren't aren't square. Yeah. They're not shaped. Well, they call them square rigging. You're but that one cool. almost looks a bit like uh, Flinders, Flinders sort of yeah. type ship, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. with more square. Yeah, English. Yeah. yeah. Yo, when I'm looking at these pictures, I'm thinking of the stories. Yeah. And that's why. Oh, I'm a bit sad to leave you mob behind. So look after the land while you're here. No Wait. disturbance. Wait. Only one motor tracks. Yep. We are given permission to visit the main lake. And Gali, our old mate in the cave, was worried about us going to the billabong. Baru, very dangerous. There are lots of Baru. It's just concerning for you, Mopdria. <laughs> <laughs> crocodile nest. We feel very privileged and we thank you very and much for, for letting us. You're come here, here to see the real people, the real Australians that lived for hundreds of years. Thousands, years. Thousands yeah. You almost existed. Isn't it good today that this island is still, still, still untouched? Untouched. Untouched. Only rangers come here. Yeah, and should always. Always. Ever. Ever, you. Yeah. Old mate Gali being so worried for us visiting the Billabong does put the wind up you a bit. It's a serious body of water, isn't it? On a very thin island. Be real careful in there. And there's crocodiles living here. This is just perfect for the crocs, actually. All these crocs that are going through the ocean, they'll be popping in here. You can see all the slides on the beach yeah. heading in this way up through the bush. They'll even be nesting in here. I don't know if I'm going to muck around in that water. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> I know what the crocs are like. <laughs> they can eat you guys first. They'll launch out and snap. Just be where they'd sit, too. This is the whole reason why this, this camp here in Jensen Bay was established. And it's the whole reason why thousands of years the Indigenous made this their home. Hell, I'd be, this would be the first place I'd be coming. And purely and simply because of this water. This island is, is barely four kilometres wide at this point, yet there, there is like a kilometre of water here. Not many people have been to this place and it's a real privilege to be here and it's a real privilege to be here and be invited by the traditional owners to come here. Near main camp, we stop for a quick spear. The bay is alive with rays and sharks. I pick up a ray, but it's the dangerous one. Gilliwark or blue spot. I was warned about it and then in a split second, my day goes bad quick. The ray gets me straight through the knuckle. I know I'm in trouble, but I'm not sure how much. Ah, oh, you're kidding me. I remember Marcus's warning days before and also the local antidote to the poison. Oh, Stingray nailed me. I head for the dunes. The black cockroach is what I need fast. Boom. The stingray get him. We're looking for the black beetle. <laughs> Got him? Yeah. Another one here. In there, out there. He forgot about the tail and how deadly that stingray can be. And I warned him about it back at the beach, you know. That, that one's called Gido. And that's the yeah, one we yeah. don't eat. And that's the one that's known as the most poisonous out of all of them. Now we proper, eh? Well, you try to grab him, did you? Oh, I'm trying to push him off the spear. He flicked his tail right around, like yeah. 180. I didn't tell you about just flicking him off like that. Yeah. 
Do you got bent it there? And jammed it straight through the top of my knuckle. Oh, the pain's coming in now. There's another one just under there, Jesse. Sitting crawling around. Dave's got a couple more. If that's gone you straight in, you need yeah. to go straight back now. Why is that? It's gonna. There's a venom gonna, on the barbs. It's gonna get really bad because it's gone underneath your skin. Okay, they're bad. Yeah, no, you gotta oh, go good. back to a base camp and get um, treatment. Yeah, it's there, see? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, never, never, when you get sting, right? Yeah. If you want to flick them off, just flick it off like that. Never with hand. But anyway, you know now for next time. Yeah, learn good. I think he's a bit worse off than he, you are. He's, no, but he's still deadly. Yeah. He can, he can still, he can still. Sorry that has happened to you. That's all right, not your fault, my fault. Marcus keeps telling me yeah, I'm in big fault. trouble. So when I saw him get stung by it, I thought he was going to die. I thought he was going to finish up there, because I was thinking, he's been stung by the dangerous thing right that we don't even eat, we don't even touch. We just don't go near it, and he got hit by it. At this stage, I don't feel too bad, apart from the serious pain. I head back to main camp and tell the guys all to keep fishing. Good one. Easy to cook. Easy? Easy to catch. <laughs> They're not that easy. <laughs> I speak to all people. I speak to the country. I speak to the spirit of the land. I speak to the water, you know, to the ocean. This is what I want. Not what I want. This is what we need back at home. We need, we need to eat. And when we're out there and we're doing the chance, you know. Well, he's got another one. Well, <laughs> cool. We call it. Oh, no. The um, black whip stingray. Marcus, two, me, none. What's he got now? Marcus is cleaning up. He's a master. Oh, you oh. legend. <laughs> nice. Now you're just showing off, buddy. You legend. Now he's just showing off. Golden G2. Nice work. Do you want me to carry that Trevally for you? Yeah, mate. <laughs> uh, get a king's service here. So I'm heading back home. I've got my dinner. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> we're going hungry. Looks like we're eating tin fish tonight. <laughs> back at camp, I start soaking the wound. The only, thing, the only thing that subsides the pain is hot water, as hot as you can stand. Went in there and came out there. The thing with this pain is it's going to last a while. It's going to last a long time. It's going to be about six or seven hours. It makes you feel a little bit nauseous as well. No, I don't feel real good. No, no I don't feel good. Jace goes downhill rapidly, and the team are getting close to hitting the panic button. You look like you're about to pass out, seriously. It's yeah, not good. Can you, can you just, like, bathe it? Like, it, it really helps with the pain. It, it's, it's really hot. It's just like, I can't put my hand in it. Yeah, 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 no, no, no it's, it's like, it's little bits. I don't think I've ever seen in this group. It's all bad. I'm tempted to get on the sat phone and ask what to do. I don't know what to do. No, it's the hot water. That's, that's it. Just don't let me pass out. I'm going to throw a bucket of cold water on you if you pass out. Is that the go? No, I just keep my hair wet. <laughs> no, he's not good. They got those. They got venom in their barbs, eh? Yeah. This is how I hurt him. My proper venom. Does it feel like it's um, the pain shooting up your arm? Yeah. How far up? In my lips. We probably should have put a pressure bandage on this, eh? You might just have to ride this one out, eh? We'll just scare me, dude. Take turns in watching him. A tense few hours later, Jace is finally looking better. Now that, that swelling's gonna take a bit to go down. 
but the actual toxin and the venom isn't sort of hammering me. And it was a bit touch and go there before. I'd never sort of had that big a reaction to it. Um, probably would have seen I went all pale in the face and 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 my mouth went dry and, and I had a tingling sensation come up through my arm and across my chest and in through my lips and it was actually, I could feel it on this arm as well. And um, I don't really know what was going on there. Actually, it doesn't end there. Jace has laid up vomiting all the next day, but we don't want to see that. But hey, next time I'm as crook as a dog, this spot will do me just fine. Introducing the new and improved home of Australian adventure, Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of yeah. aerial driving, Woo. fishing, Woo. touring, rebuilt, bush cooking and whatever you call this. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All For Adventure, Unleashed and more original series from Jace and the team. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. You can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Now with no lock-in contract. That's why Unleashed TV is the home of Australian adventure. <laughs>